Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you, and may it honor and glorify God and His kingdom. Does the Bible include all of God's written word? I believe this is a very important topic, and it's why I've made videos in the past explaining that the Bible does not include all of God's written word. But in this video, I would really like to focus on Scripture itself. I would like to ask this question and open this up for discussion. What I'm looking for is evidence within Scripture itself that the Bible either does include all of God's written word or it doesn't. Is there any evidence supporting either one? And if so, is there more for the one side than the other side? That's what I'd like to look at in this video. Now, I'd like to first explain uh, the consequences of getting it wrong. If I'm wrong, if I'm looking at books that are not inspired, and that the Bible does in fact include all of God's written word, well then, I become susceptible to the lies of Satan. And I can be led down the wide path believing that I'm actually on the narrow. However, if I'm right and the opposing side is wrong and we do not have all of God's written word, if people only have a Reader's Digest version of God's written word, then it becomes easy for Satan to deceive them, making them believe they are walking the narrow path that leads to eternal life when in fact they are on the wide path that leads to destruction. This is why it's so very important that we get this right. Now, I believe it's important that we be able to back up our arguments with Scripture. Now, what's really odd is that those people who are most adamant and uh, forceful regarding this issue, that the Bible does include all of God's written word, they are the ones who have to actually go outside of the Bible for supporting evidence. There are Christians who say they live by Scripture only, sola scriptura. And they say that that means living by only the 66 books of the Protestant Bible. Well, what's strange is that they can't do that when it comes to the evidence for the Bible, including all of God's written word. They can't find the evidence for that. They have to actually go outside of the Bible to explain why they believe what they do. They have to, for example, refer to the Septuagint, which was uh, a book uh, written by Jewish scholars. Uh, and what they did is they translated uh, the, some of the books of the Old Testament into Greek. And Christians today claim that because they did this, they created this Septuagint, it is what we draw on and it is proof that the Old Testament that we have in the Bible today includes all of God's written word. But this is not referring to Scripture. It is going to an outside source, not just any outside source, it's going to Jewish tradition. But it's not scriptural. There is no evidence in Scripture to tell us that the, the Septuagint includes all of God's uh, Old Testament writings then the same people will refer to the writings and teachings of what they call early church leaders. But they are church leaders who came on the scene a couple hundred years after the original apostles. And they say that these church leaders were directed to create the canon that we have today. But this is not referring to Scripture. This is not living by sola scriptura. This is having to go outside of Scripture for evidence to support your argument. So they, they can't even do it on this very important matter. Now, what is the evidence in Scripture itself? Well, there really is only one passage that people refer to when they say Scripture does support the Bible in the way we have it today. 
and that is a passage that's found in the book of Revelation. Note, first off, that I said the book of Revelation. It is the last book of the Bible, and it has to do with the vision that is given to John from Jesus. In fact, in the very beginning of the book of Revelation, it tells us that this vision is given to John from Jesus. The book is from Jesus. And it is this book, the book of Revelation, that is being referred to when we are told that we are not to add to or to take away from it. But many Christians today try to put forth this argument that the, bu or that the book being referred to in the book of Revelation is actually the Bible. Now let's look at this argument logically. If it's referring to the Bible, that this is the book being referred to, then John and the people living at the time of John could never add to or take away from it. But the warning is also for the people living during John's time. The warning is not for future generations a few hundred years later. It is not referring to the church leaders or anyone else 200 years later after John. This vision that John received has to do with his vision, what we know today as the book of Revelation. This is what John was to write. He was to write out this vision that became known as the book of Revelation. And this is what no one is supposed to add to or take away from. There's no way that it can be referring to a book that wasn't even created until more than 200 years after John. And in the case of the Protestant Bible, well, it wasn't created in the form it is today until really 100 years ago. I say this because the original King James Bible, the original Protestant Bible, actually included the 14 books of the Apocrypha. Therefore, there is no way, absolutely no way, that the Bible is what was being spoken about, referenced to, in the book of Revelation. And once we realize this and we look for other evidence, well, there is nothing in Scripture that supports the Bible as including all of God's written word. There is, however, mounds of evidence that it doesn't. Now, all we need to do is look at the many different references to other books, and there are many. And I'm going to include in the description box a short list of some of the books that are referenced. And they are referenced in such a way that we know the writer considered them to be inspired. And nowhere is this more evident than in the book of Jude, where Jude uh, actually quotes a passage from the writings of Enoch. And he does so in such a way that there can be no doubt he considered the writings of Enoch to be inspired, as did Jesus and the other apostles. And I will include links to videos of mine where I talk about this, that there are many references to the writings of Enoch. In fact, Enoch is the most referenced book in the Bible. I'm also going to include a link to another YouTube user by the name In His Word 2. She has created a good series where she looks at all the different references to the writings of Enoch. References that many people don't recognize because they've never read Enoch. So we find all these different references to other books that were considered inspired. That's the first bit of evidence. But there's also evidence that God's written word can be lost, can be misplaced, that people can ignore it. And I bring this up because there are many Christians who put forward the argument to me, and it's really coming from one of emotion, that God would never allow his written word to be lost. That for some reason they believe he would have to. It's like it would be impossible for God not to do this, to create a Bible that would be easily read and kept and presented to us. But this is not the case. There are three instances within Scripture where we are told differently. It's explained to us that God's Word was lost, was misplaced, that 
for a time being, people didn't have it. The, uh, the one case that is found in the Bible itself is in 2 Kings. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2 Kings, it describes a priest finding the law of Moses in the temple where it had been misplaced. And for a long time, the nation did not have the law of Moses. The priest takes this book, shows it to the king, and the king tears his clothes. He's in deep sorrow over the things that he reads. And so we see here in this story that the word of God, his writings are misplaced and that people don't have his word for a while. But there are two other examples that we find outside of the Bible but are found in Scripture. The, the one example is found in the book of Jubilees, and I'm going to read from that now. Uh, just to give uh, a bit of background before I read what I'm going to, uh, the book of Jubilees is it's information that is given to Moses from an angel. He is giving him information regarding everything from the time of Adam and creation up to the time that he is living. And a part of that uh, story includes something that happened with Abraham. And it has to do with God revealing the lost language of the Hebrew to him. So I'm reading from chapter 12 from uh, this book, the book of Jubilees, uh, beginning with verse 24. I will be a God to you and your son, and to your son's son, and to all your offspring. Fear not. From now on and to all generations of the earth, I am your God. Now this is describing God speaking to Abraham. The Lord God said, Open his mouth and his ears, that he may hear and speak with his mouth, with the language which has been revealed. For it had ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babylon. And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in Hebrew, in the tongue of the creation. He took the books of his fathers, and these were written in Hebrew, and he transcribed them, and began from then on to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not understand, and he studied them during the six rainy months. So here we see it described that uh, the writings, the whole entire language, of the Hebrews had been lost. And then God reveals it to Abraham. And with that, he received all the books that Noah had written and that Enoch had written. And he transcribes them. So for a time being, it wasn't just the written word of God that was lost, but the entire Hebrew language had been forgotten. So that's a second example of how the written word of God was not kept. It was lost for a time being. Now I'd like to read from uh, the book of 2nd Ezra, which makes up the Apocrypha. And I'm reading from uh, this Bible here. It is a King James Bible. So for those who say the King James Bible only includes 66 books, well, you are mistaken. I'm reading from chapter 14, beginning with verse 27. Then I went, this is Ezra speaking, the prophet Ezra. Then went I forth as he commanded and gathered all the people together and said, Hear these words, O Israel. Our fathers at the beginning were strangers in Egypt from whence they were delivered and received the law of life which they kept not, which ye also have transgressed after them. Then was the land, even the land of Sion, parted among you by lot. But your fathers and ye yourselves have done unrighteousness and have kept not and have not kept the ways which the highest commanded you. And for as much as he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing that he had given you. And now are ye here and your brethren among you. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. For after death shall the judgment come, and when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Let no man therefore come unto me now, nor seek after me these forty days. 
So I took the five men, as he commanded me, and we went into the field and remained there. And the next day, behold, a voice called me, saying, Ezra, open thy mouth, and drink that I give thee to drink. Then opened I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full, as it were, with water, but the color of it was like fire. And I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding, and wisdom grew in my breast, from my spirit strengthened my memory. And my mouth was opened and shut no more. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that they were told, which they knew not. And they sat forty days, and they wrote in the day, and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. In forty days they wrote two hundred and four books, and it came to pass, when the forty days were for fulfilled, that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the seventy last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. So here it describes, in the King James Bible, 204 books being given to Ezra, Ezra to write. He transcribes them. And then we are told that all but 70 are for the public. Publish them for everyone, the worthy and the unworthy, to read. Well, these are part of the books that were given uh, at the time that the Septuagint was created. These books that were for the worthy and the unworthy. It is the Septuagint that is made up of general books for the general public, for both the worthy and unworthy. But the Septuagint never included these other 70 books that are described as being for the initiate only. And it is these other 70 books that we are missing from the Bible today, among some of these other books as well, for we are told there were 204. Now, the American Standard Version Bible uh, translates it a bit differently. It doesn't say 204. It has actually a, a very different number. It tells us 94. And the way it finishes up, it tells us that 24 books were for the general public, were for the worthy and the unworthy. 24. But 70 books, just as 70 are described in the King James Bible, are for the initiate only. So we have evidence within this passage, within these scriptures, that the Bible today does not include all of God's written word. Now, I'd like to read from one more book. Again, one that's not in the Bible. It's called The Gospel of Nicodemus. Now, in this book, uh, after Jesus has been crucified, Pilate gets concerned. And he goes and he demands that the Jewish religious leaders tell him whether or not Jesus really was the Messiah. And this is what happens. After these things, Pilate went to the temple of the Jews and called together all the rulers and scribes and doctors of the law and went with them into a chapel of the temple and commanding that all the gates should be shut, said to them, I have heard that ye have a certain large book in this temple. I desire you therefore that it may be brought before me. And when the great book carried by four ministers of the temple and adorned with gold and precious stones was brought, Pilate said to them, uh, Pilate said to them all, I adjure you by the God of your fathers who made and commanded this temple to be built that ye conceal not the truth from me. Now I'm going, uh, I was reading from chapter 22 there. I'm going to, for time's sake, skip down to verse 10. And it is our custom annually to open this holy book before an assembly and to search there for the counsel of God. And we found in the first of the 70 books where Michael the archangel is speaking to the third son of Adam. Okay, so it tells us that it's referring to this, to the first 70 books. 
which is obviously referring to the 70 books that Ezra was speaking about as well. And it, it's saying it's referring to this book that is among the first 70. And in that book, it tells of, the, the, of Michael, the archangel, speaking to the third son of Adam. Now, we don't find that description of the archangel Michael speaking to the third son of Adam in the Bible. So this is evidence the Bible does not include all of God's written word. And the 70 books referenced in the Gospel of Nicodemus line up with the 70 books spoken about in 2nd Esther. So this is part of the evidence for the Bible not including all of God's written word. And there, there is more as well that I wish I had more time, uh, but I don't want this video to run any longer than it already has, and I, I do apologize for the length of it already. As always, I look forward to comments and messages. Perhaps uh, as the discussion goes in the comments section, I'll have an opportunity to bring up some of the other evidence. As always, I look forward to comments and messages. Till next time, peace and blessings.